about this work. Well, that's a marvelous level of attainment. I, I'm, I'm proud of you for that. You're showing uh, not only your tr traditional, if I may use that phrase, oils, but you're also showing some of your new work, which is a new media for you. Yeah. Uh, I've been in, in rehearsal calling it the computer-generated art, but I'd rather hear from you what you call it. Well, I've always been a painter, and I uh uh, my wife Connie walked in front of one of my paintings and I just, the image of her in front of that painting, I really liked that idea. And we had just gotten a computer, and I'm completely computer illiterate, but I was trying to figure out how I could uh, do this, how I could, uh, you know, combine Connie, a figure, in front of my paintings. And uh, so a friend came over and installed Photoshop and I t taught me the six things I need to know to uh, get started and I've been working with it. and. I've really liked the results a lot. It's kind of completed my whole uh, series of work. It's, uh, what have you done? We have an example of it here between us. Yeah, I, uh, I just took tons of photographs of uh, Connie and uh, brought them into uh, the Photoshop and isolated them and brought them into the painting, into mm -hmm. that world, into that environment of the painting. And the two of them just seem to mesh. I, I've always used images in my work as a point of reference at some point. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of everything I had ever wanted to do, and my work was right there in front of me when I, uh, when I saw that first image. <laughs> so your oil, the tectonic plate, um, was your first example of, of using your wife as, as a model? No, no, this is the second generation. Mm -hmm. This is the second series. Uh, the first was kind of cruder than this. I, was, uh, I just took snapshots with a camera and bad lighting, and. Uh, and I had to bring it in, and it's kind of very crude and primitive, and uh, they're just getting a little more sophisticated because I had a photographer help me and had real lights, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's getting uh, more sophisticated in that way. But, uh, Great. What fascinates me is that you'll be showing the original oils as well as the new computer generations yeah. um, at your show at the LA Art Corps. Yeah, it's real important. Uh, you know, one, without, one with the other. They, uh, they go together. They, and, uh, that's important to me, too. Uh, and you, you've been it. working in the abstract for, for, for several decades now. Uh, who were some of your inspirations? I was thinking about it the other day. I've forgotten most of my inspirations. Uh, the first show I ever saw, well, I was a senior in high school and, and went to the L.A. County Museum and saw Keenholz, and I realized how, how influential that was to me. Uh, I did a lot of found objects for a long time and uh, then just kind of settled into painting. And then I think maybe uh, Raschenberg, his uh, combine paintings, there was an attitude about the paintings that I related to. I felt close to his gesture and the way that he painted in it. And I think that that, you know, was just the people that influenced me were the people which were not always the people that painted like I did. Uh, and in this particular, uh, most of them, they just kind of, I learned from them internally, but I didn't paint at all like them. I, I like Frank Stella's blackboard paintings. They, they influenced me a lot. It had a lot to do with attitude. And uh, others, yes, there's you know, a lot of emotion in your work. Yeah, and uh, I think that I learned from my peers probably more. Uh, I had close peers, Jan Green, Bruce DeGruy, uh, uh, Ross Blechner. There were some painters, uh, Troy Brontuck uh, influenced me a lot, and just they were painters in, uh, that I went to school with that you know, started me out, kind of gave me an idea of what I was, do I was doing, and then pretty much from there on, it's been a, a personal investigation. Of course. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm. I'm it's fantastic that today we have five examples of your oils with the corresponding new art, the new computer generations. So let's see how many of them we can get through with the audience today. Sure, sure. Our first oil is called uh, My Father Was a Singer. 
who didn't sing. Who didn't sing. Yes. That's a very important part about it. Uh, tell us about this. Well, I had uh, decided at this point, when I started to paint this series, I just really decided I was an abstract painter, that mm -hmm. I, was, I had kind of dropped all my concerns with, uh, with content, whether it was relevant, whether it wasn't, and I just knew that the content of my work was the language that I had created over 30 years of painting. I just like allowed myself to do that and the work just started to fall out of me and uh, when I was doing this painting, uh, I, I, had, I was doing a lot of uh, self-searching myself and I came upon that realization about my father and realized how important it was in my life and how it had influenced me so much. It's a painting rife with emotion. Yeah. Um, I, I believe in giving it that tagline, that title that you've actually, uh, which you do so rarely, but you actually painting it into the painting, actually writing it on the painting, um, almost makes it cathartic. Well, I, you know, I don't usually write in my paintings hardly ever, but this was something that was, it, that was important to me. It was important enough to paint that, to write that on the painting as when I was painting it. It, it was important. It was kind of a uh, turning point in my life in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I wrote that down and that's, uh, and the only, the only uh, thing it has to do with this painting is the fact that that's where I was in my life when I did this painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's significant. Uh, yes, but it does, it does allow the viewer to know that the painting is more about you than about your father. Oh, I, I haven't thought of that. I'm glad you told me. <laughs> <laughs> You've brought with it the wonderful computer generation that goes with it, and that's called North Star Fade. Yeah. All right, and here's Connie. Right. Tell us about this. Well, I, uh, I, I just started to bring these figures in and work with them. A lot of them were out of focus. I had a lot of problems with that, and uh, so it was just a matter of uh, necessity. I came up with masks because on this particular image, her face was out of focus. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I came up with the mask, and that just kind of fit into the whole kind of sense of mystery and emotion of, of this piece. Yes. And uh, the North Star was, uh, may I have some water, please? Thank you. The North Star was uh, in the painting at the top. It says North Star. So mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, I, I see it as a muse uh, coming to a sleeping, a sleeping genius. You, you have talked about those things, and that's, that comes totally from my unconscious. I'm not aware of those things when I'm making it, but it seems that I find those things in my work. As I set up a process that, that can, mm -hmm. those, th those things can emerge, and, uh, and, uh, and it's important. I like to have you look at it so you can tell me what it is I'm doing. You know? I, I continue to be totally fascinated by how well these computer-generated images fit with the existing oils. Mm -hmm. we, we, have, we have another example called Green and Red Peacock Fan. Yeah. And this was an oil you did when? Uh, 1999. Mm -hmm. uh, Quite recently. Uh, a year ago. And uh, this is a nice painting. This is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, there's great imagery um, all over the painting. One sees little birds, one sees big birds. Uh, what were you thinking about when you did this work? I really try to paint with a quiet mind in this. I just to let things fall out of me. And mm -hmm. uh, in the images that happen in my work, I just find there. I don't set out to, to make a specific image. Usually there's a few paintings that I'll start with a specific image, but most of the, on this particular painting, I just started to let things work out and then I would find things in it. And this one seemed to have a lot of birds in it. And uh, I just found there they were, so I just... Uh, I had the greatest time finding them for myself. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Let's take a look at the computer generation that went with this one. Yeah, I like this too. All right. Yeah. And this one's entitled Tri Peaks. Yeah. Uh, and I'm fascinated about how the mask fits in with the skyline of the original painting. Yeah, that's, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of painting that I do with these images, just uh, editing and, and looking at things and seeing if they work. And, and computer is so amazing because it's like three clicks and and you know you can totally change something you can put it in you can take it out in a painting you know i can i can change the color in three clicks i mean in, in the mm -hmm. computer and in the painting i can you know it's like uh two gallons of turpentine and 20 rags that make this change it's uh, it's wonderful so i just worked and then when i found the, the shapes that work together it was done it's just like a painting it's not uh, that much different you know mm -hmm. my concerns are the same so you you begin by taking the, the source material the original oil and scanning it into the computer yeah, I scan okay. them in, and then I bring them in and isolate the image and pull it into the painting, and, and then just go from there. Go from there, yeah. Okay. Our next example uh, is Red Snake. That's an oil. 
Yeah, it's quite a large work. Yeah. Um, I was taken with the, with, with the length of the line. You spoke about dram dramatizing the line. Could you explain what you mean by that in Red Snake? Well, I just kind of pushed this as far as I could. I pushed it to, to extremes in terms of curves and angles, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I kind of allowed myself as much as I'll allow myself to go in this one. It was kind of working kind of close to going over the edge and, and uh, becoming uh, too much. You know, this, this painting is uh, about as far as I can go in terms of shape and... Uh, mm -hmm. There's great line. motion in yeah. Red Snake. Yeah, there one, is, yeah. one sees this enormous serpent on an angry wine green sea. Um, I think you've, you've succeeded in taking line just about as far as it can go from one side of the canvas to the other. But let's take a look at how fascinating um, the computer the computer generated work is. Uh, and this is entitled African Mask. Right. When I d did uh, the, the, f the first uh, manipulation, I uh, gave Connie a mask. It just opened up everything. It was first, it was just two, two yellow eyes. I called it Simpson eyes because I was watching television with my son. And I did mm -hmm. that and it was, I really enjoyed it. And so then it, it opened up a whole new kind of a, a situation for me in the painting. And so I started, and I did this African mask and at one time, and I still might do it, a whole series of them. Uh, but mm -hmm. I really, you know, that was going to, you know, the most primitive mask I could think of, and it was... Uh, mm -hmm. The colors in the mask mirror the colors in the painting. That's what I mean, a computer, you know, I don't know anything about computers, but you can go into the painting and just pull out the color that, that you like in the painting, and bam, there it is on the computer. It's, uh -huh. it's pretty, uh, you feel like this powerful person, you know. <laughs> um, and the emotion in the, in the, in the mask... Each mask has a different emotion. What, what, what did you see in the African mask that made you know that it went on Red Snake? I didn't. I made it, and I, I just made the mask, and then I put it in, and, just in the, and then I changed it several times until it worked in the painting, the same way mm -hmm. that I worked in a painting. I just, uh, you know, there's a certain language and a certain consistency and a certain structure in a painting that I kind of understand naturally, and, I, and I'm not sure what works, but I'm real sure what doesn't work when mm -hmm. I'm working and so I just find things discover them and I decide to leave them okay and well that's the tone, of, the tone of the painting is definitely the same tone as the mask the two resonate together I found it I found it a perfectly wonderful example of of tying together both the computer and the oil thanks let's let's look okay. at my favorite the, the one we used to call a landscape the <laughs> one you've entitled tunnels yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about this this oil well, I, was, I, I had used uh, some tunnels and some openings. I've always used doors or windows mm -hmm. in my work. Uh, I've always had used them sometimes as eyes to look back at me to set up a kind of a mask within the painting. Mm -hmm. This one, uh, uh, it just, this has a lot going on, a lot of um, emotion, a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know, this one, this is a, Kind of a strange bird to me. It has birds in it too. For some reason, I was. The when we first it. discussed it, we we called it a landscape, an abstract landscape. Yeah. You've since rethought those terms. Well, it, they're you know they're all reference to landscape. It's about you know creating the space where life happens. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's about creating and it's an uh, internal emotional landscape. Uh, it's a and it's emotional environment is basically what it is where there's there are traces of our existence in it and, and I try to set up something where where you, you can go into it and, and pull something out of it that that's a personal you know uh, something that happened to you that it'll remind you of something mm -hmm. and uh, so there's just a lot in there these paintings have a lot they're a lot more than landscapes they, they start out they just use that as a point of reference mm -hmm. and when did you know that this painting was about tunnels when I put the tunnels in <laughs> You know, I said, I mean, very few times do I, you know, I pick something specific that I want to add into something, but once in a while I do, and in this particular one I wanted to try tunnels. Yeah. And I did have this idea of something in my mind of some place uh -huh. I'd seen where there was two tunnels that went through this granite rock or something, and, and I think that I had this feeling of granite and this heaviness in this painting that was a little different than my other paintings. It had a different quality. Yes, it does have quite a distinctive quality. Yeah. I was immediately drawn to the two tunnel-like openings at the bottom of the painting, before I asked you what the title was. Uh, and when you said tunnels, I said, of course. I was looking around, I couldn't remember what I had titled it, and then my eyes went down and I, oh, I said, yeah, the tunnels. That's, why, that's how I titled them, it's just the ways I can remember the painting. Mm -hmm. 
Have you taken inspiration from nature for, in your landscapes? Unconsciously, yeah. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you're in nature and it's, you know, everybody's, you know, you're closest to God. It's the most beautiful. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Yosemite is my, the most beautiful place I've ever seen. It's, yeah, it's just a part of me that comes out, yeah. Yet you work to capture a, a chaos, a, a conflict within nature. There are light and dark areas throughout the paintings, um, almost battle-like lines being drawn between the sections of the painting. Uh, is this your ref a reflection of nature in, in your mind? Well, it's, you know, it's me and Yosemite, you know. It's a, it's a reflection of my life and uh, my battles and my victories and my defeats and mm -hmm. everything that goes into make me up. And it's, a, you know, we all share that. Life is, you know, kind of hard and, and we all, it's, you know, getting through it is what it is. It's what our yes. life is. And, and I think that, you know, I, my job is to, is to have this and be able to draw on it, you know, as experience. And it's real unconscious. When I set out to try to do something consciously, I'm in a lot of trouble, you know. I never, never mm -hmm. pull it off. But if I can open myself up and let this come out, it, it, uh, it seems to, it kind of comes into my work. Yet there's so many images of your childhood uh, in your work. There's a, a painting that we didn't bring today that um, is of rolling hills, which is obviously the foothills of Modesto, which is the back door to Yosemite. Yes, that's true, and uh, I, rolling hills seem to be important to me for some reason, uh, uh -huh. you know. It's they, a distinctly California scene, uh, making you the spiritual inheritor of the California Impressionists. I uh, like it when I hear those things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's take, let's take tunnels one step further and see the computer generation. Here we've added Connie in, in between the tunnels, uh -huh. over, over the, the Yosemite-like landscape, and you've entitled this Twilight. Yeah. Coming from the mask, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I had discovered a new little thing on my computer that I could go into that had lighting effects, mm -hmm. so I was playing around with that. And uh, Are you teasing us here? here no, this I'm very serious oil talking <laughs> about chaos within nature uh -huh. has superimposed upon it um, your, your lovely wife in a rather rakish and provocative pose. Yes. <laughs> well, you laugh and smile when you, when you look at it, and so do I. What's happening? Just Those are just about attitudes of, uh, you know, kind of relaxing within it. You know, I mean, I, I can't... My paintings have a lot of drama in them, and they have a lot of emotion, and, and they have a lot of, you know, joy and pain and all that stuff. But, I mean, I can't, you know, I'm 52 years old. I can't live like that anymore. I have to kind of relax now and settle down a little bit. I can paint from my experience, but I can't, you know, I can't live at that kind of extreme. I can't sprint all the time now. I used to try that, and, and, and I can't do it anymore. It didn't work. You know? mm -hmm. It, it, it feels as if you've taken um, a lighter, more, more humane look at your art through I'm, the computer. I'm, well, I'm like 10,000 times more lighthearted about my work than I used to be, you know. Mm -hmm. it, as uh, if you're reminding yourself not to take your work or your life so seriously. Yeah, it's priorities. It's changed a lot, you know. I mean, uh, that's changed in me. There are other series of computer-generated um, uh, works where, where it's, it's even more lighthearted uh. than we see here. Um, our last, our last set, very intriguing, uh, almost mystical. The oil is entitled "Type Top White Marks," and it's totally different from any of your other works. Um, it's a painting that uh, uh, I just—it's what some paintings they just kind of fall out of me, and, I, and they don't take very long to do. And other paintings I have to struggle with, and. This was a painting that I had done, you know, it had been several different paintings. I kept building up on it and trying to make it work, and it had a lot in it that were good, but I could never make it work, and finally one day I just, I was in a certain kind of mood, and I came out and I put these, these white marks on the top, and it pulled the whole painting together. And it was nice, you know, I, I like that. Uh, I, then I liked the painting, and I had gone to where it had promise, but I could never pull it apart, pull it mm -hmm. together. And Have you done any, any others that were similar to this? This was quite unique in, in, the, in all of the catalog that I looked through. Uh, similar to this, I've done. I've I've kind of fallen upon a finished painting that uh, before like that. You know, mm -hmm. just to come in in a certain kind of mood and just you know screw it. I've tried to make this work so many ways and and just almost get kind of you know lyrical and just go at it and and actually have it work. It's an, it's a nice uh, uh, experience. Once so it doesn't happen often. Great. Yeah. Let's spend a moment talking about um, how you work as an artist. I think it's important that as, as artists we share with the next generation how we work. And you've been, been so open and honest about 
what it is that drives you to paint. And I wondered if you wanted to spend a few moments as if you were talking to a young artist explaining your process of creating. Well, you know, the art kind of came to me. I didn't come to art. It was just something that I did well. I was kind of raised to work in a gas station and probably grew up wanting to be a, a baseball player or something. Uh, and it was just something that I did well. So when I went into art school, I just had to look around and decide whether it was for me. And, and I found that it was, and there was kind of a point of no return. I just knew, I felt it inside. And then from that point on, I've just been working and struggling with my own strengths and weaknesses to try to overcome my demons, to try to, uh, to work towards my strengths, to try to trust myself, to try to find some kind of truth in all of this. And, uh, and it's, uh, you know, I think that the, the, the proudest thing that I am is that I'm 52 and I'm, st I'm doing this and I've made it through those things. Uh, if you're a young artist, uh, a lot of things will change over your life and the ways that you look at it and the importance of it. And, uh, the value you put in it, but you know, at this point in my life, I feel like it's what I do best. It's what I feel a responsibility to, and my goal is to make the best work that I can make. You know. And how do you approach the canvas when you when you go into the studio in the morning? Um, what is your attitude? What is your what is your outlook? It really depends on where I'm at at the time of my life. Uh, when I look back at my work in my life, the one of the reasons that I know that I'm an artist is because my paintings always reflect right where I was at the time I was doing them. Mm -hmm. I think that it, it, that's what, you know, each painting changes because I go into it in a different place. I go into it with my history, I go into it with what I've learned in my life, and I go into it with what's going on at that particular time and my, my fears and, 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 you know, my accomplishments and all that, and it all make, it goes, goes into what goes into the painting that day. And then the, the, the the control I have over that is I can edit it. I can leave it or I can, I can uh, uh, get rid of it. You know? So I, I do that later. I try to go in with where I'm at at the time and then trust that, go mm -hmm. with that. And then something usually will come out of that. You know? And then you can always edit. And that's, the, that's where your control comes in. So tell us what your mission is then in art. My mission is to uh, uh, separate my agenda from your agenda. How it's so? in the sense that everybody kind of has an agenda and there was times in my life where your agenda really affected mine and mm -hmm. it's like I would half of me was trying to make the best painting I could and half of me was trying to make the best painting that you could make if you were making my painting and I wasn't making my best work mm -hmm. so what is your what is it now now I'm just I'm trying to trust my abilities trust my instincts as a painter I relax with, I'm not struggling with the content anymore. Is this relevant? Is this not relevant? Am I reflecting the world I live in or am I like out in, you know, left field somewhere? You know, am I in the attic? You know, am I, you know, what's, what's going on? I've, that used to be such a, a point of, uh, it almost made me quit painting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and Sounds it, like quite a struggle. Well, yeah, it is for me. It's, it's different for everybody, you know. Some people, it's what they do best. If, to me, it was tough to try to place my work out into the world and mm -hmm. try to combine those two, you know. And what, what catapulted you into this, this, this need to trust your own truth? You know, like breathing or something? It was like, you know, either I, do, either I find a way that I can relax in this or I'm not going to, like, make it much longer. This is too hard. I'm too, there's too many too many fears, there's too many like trying to put my work up against somebody else's, there's too much, is this enough, you know, no, this isn't enough, I'll do this, is this enough, no, this is enough, I'll do that, and, and I've just gone through all of that, and I've just arrived at a place where I really have confidence in my, in my language as a painter, and that's the content, and if it's, if it, if it relates, if somebody, if it relates to somebody, great, if it doesn't, I've done, I know that I've done the best that I can, and, and that's really at this point in my life, that's good enough, you know. I know that I've, I know I've reached a point where I can give you the best painting I can make, 